Hey, it's John McBride, Rocket Mountain Unmanned Systems, RMUS. We're taking a look at the M210 and the X-T2 and its actual configuration, what the camera is doing, settings, and everything else. The, this will be very similar to what the M200 and the M210 RTK are as far as using the Crystal Sky app, or the Crystal Sky, and we can still utilize on the M200 the uh, iPad, if we needed to, we just have to use the XT Pro app. So we'll cover this as far as it being on an M210. Send in settings is, is what we can do there. And then we'll go into the app and take a look at the few things. So it's just the same connection on the top as the Z30, X5, and the other. So we have that. That's pretty simple as far as setting it up on the bird. But on the sentence, we have a couple of things. So we'll just go right into the app and show a few things on how and what is happening here as far as uh, settings go and what I've done to configure. So we have the gimbal moving up and down. I can see that happening right there. We have the ability to move it left and right, but we can also do this from the screen so we can touch it, touch the screen and move it however, whatever direction we want to, if we want. Additionally, on the sentence, I'm able to actually switch between my different modes. So we'll show that in the actual app part. That's a little bit better. But on the button, I can set up buttons to do certain things to the camera and the way that it acts when we do certain stuff. Uh, up here on the top left, we have some other settings that we'll go through to show you uh, how to do active track with the heat tracking as well and things like that. So let's take a little bit closer look at the app and some of the settings of it. So as we get into the app, what we're using is the pilot app here. And within the pilot app itself, we have a couple of things up on the top that, that uh, give us settings and things that we can do to the um, actual camera. We'll just close the map portion out right there. Because we only have the X-T2 on and that's it, we still have the ability to see the FPV camera. There's Jace playing along on his phone instead of actually paying attention to what I'm doing. So we have the FPV camera. We can close or get rid of that if we wanted to on the app. And then, as I was showing a little bit earlier, I can move the gimbal left and right, up and down, whatever direction I want to go. I can do that. You can see that coming through the app. Up on the settings, up on the top left, this is the thermal settings itself right now that we're in. So we can see that by the FCC trigger. The FCC, we can see that pause just a second as Jace is moving around. Go ahead and move your hand around a little bit, Jace, and I'm going to just activate that. So that's what that button does. It's actually a flat field correction, a calibration to the sensor. This is a 336 model, so right next to it, I have a times one, times two, and times four uh, digital zoom that I have there. And on the 640 models, I will have a ability to go to times eight. The next one over is the F. Uh, we have the spot meter that we put on there, so depending on where I want to touch the screen, since these are actual radiometric, I don't have to point the actual camera at the heat source at what I want to align it. I can actually just have this scene going and look at the actual thing wherever I touch. And then the other one is the other cool one that the radiometric camera has is the box tool. So if we put the box around Jace's face, it will show the hottest and coldest thing in the scene. And we can see those showing up at the bottom, 96 degrees at the bottom, 72 degrees at a minimum, an average of across the, the box area is 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have the box feature, and this is again, part of the selections of some of the tools that in which we can represent certain things during live flight. That's pretty important. These things are not going to show up, by the way, in your recorded video later. The MSX, that MSX, if we touch the MSX button, this is going to rotate through our actual visible, visible light, picture in picture, and back to the MSX. So that's what that button does, is rotates that. And then I have that set up on the button here as well so that you can rotate through those as well. And then the little wrench thing here is to turn the MSX on. So MSX is the blending of the RGB camera as well as the thermal camera together, kind of a FLIR specific um, technology that blends those two together. If I punch this on low, we can see the alignment of certain things that the parallax is what we call this, the two cameras hitting each other. And for the, the demonstration here, I can move the RGB outline just a little bit. If I come back and try to line that up as perfect as possible, depending on the, how distance and parallax it is away, I can then define how much actual overlay I have of that. So here we can see 
Jace's shirt really well, the alias, uh, alias MX that I can read. I can actually read that. If I turn it off, I cannot. So it takes that little bit of RGB highlighting and, and highlights that. Really good for all you fire guys, um, serv public service guys, police officers, whatever it might be, if you guys need to read placards on the side of something burning, is that that might be very difficult to see. So let's show that one more time where we can see that. You can also see highlighted on other things that are, are there in the scene and then turn it back off. So a really neat feature, but that's what the little wrench does at the top. If we come into the MSX, we press the MSX button again, it'll highlight, it'll go into the visible camera. There we also have a times two, times four, and times eight digital zoom in the visible camera. Pretty neat. If we come back out of the visible, then we have picture in picture. So we're gonna pull that back out and we have a picture in picture where we can't swap these two. It's the thermal is always gonna be the smaller imager, image. RGB is going to be the bigger image, but we can choose what we do with the picture in picture. So depending on, again, let's rotate through that one more time, picture in picture, I can choose it to be in the upper left corner is where the setting is right now. Side by side if I want, so we can see how that looks as we move the camera up and down. And the visible light, messing with our light back there. And then the centering, which is actually pretty cool. But then we're also given a couple of alignment things here. So go ahead and stick your arm out there, Jace. So if it isn't quite aligned up and down, we can see that they're not quite aligned. We can align it left and right. We can actually get as close as we possibly can. And again, this is a feature that absolutely has to do with the distance away from your subject on getting this alignment correct. But if that is what we want to do, we can go ahead and put the picture in picture right there in the middle. And if we pull our hand back in there, Jace, we can see we have thermal and we can align that the best we can depending on the distance away. On the where the picture in picture is left, right, center or not, we can choose where that's going to be. We come into the wrench and the settings here and the picture in picture setting right there. And we can choose whether we want that the raw bottom, center, right top, wherever we want to put that. We'll put that back at the left center or the left top. That's where we had it. So there's a couple of things that we can do as far as the way the, the camera is actually outputting and viewing these to, to put them in the app. A Little bit on the radiometric side. So let's go into the actual thermal side, thermal camera itself, and look at some of the settings real quickly, which are very familiar to what the, um, the actual uh, settings are on a radiometric XT. We have the video caption. That's actually a pretty new file type that, uh, that we can create a SLQ file. Uh, for reference later. That's what that is for, is turning on the SLQ file. We have the anti-flicker, if we want that on or off in the um, RGB settings. Picture in picture, we just talked about that. ROI is your range of interest, so we can choose how the camera acts depending on whether we have sky or not, the sky in the scene. Uh, the color palettes still need to be chosen from the app actually here. So you can see the different color palettes we can choose. Let me put that back on a Fusion since everybody kind of likes that one. We come back out of that. We have the scene. So the scene just is a preset setting for different, uh, uh, whether we're outside, outdoor, indoor, whatnot. And then we can define a couple of user settings depending on how we want to have the, the radiometric be represented on the actual screen. Uh, the other one is the gain mode. So gain mode is pretty important when we're talking about taking the camera out into um, very high temperature sensed areas or very low temperature sensed areas. When we have a low temperature sensor, we want as much resolution of that as possible. So if we watch what happens here, we'll turn that on to low. And we'll see that Jace almost disappears in color because there's a certain amount of range that the camera wants to be able to see and represent up to 1022 degrees Fahrenheit. Typically, I just leave this setting on auto and we get a little bit better thermal resolution as we can see that. The temp alert, if we want to turn that on or off, the external parameters, that's the other one that we have. So we can just set our emissivity values, atmospheric temperature, there's all of these things that are relative to actually getting absolute temperature and we can define three different types of settings there depending on C1 being I'm looking at a roof that's rubber. C2, I'm looking at a roof that's made out of metal. 
C3, I'm looking at a roof that's made out of tar and gravel. These are different emissivity, emissivity settings, but this allows you to do that. The temp alert that, again, we can set a temperature alert if we need to, um, and that will uh, then show a little red icon on the bottom, so telling you that you've hit the top temperature. And the FCC setting, whether I want it to do it auto-triggering by itself or if I turn it off completely and I manually do it, and that is the flat field co correction. We have formatting the SD card one or two, formatting SD card number one, that's where all of your RGB and single images and movie files are saved, but we haven't talked about this yet, and we'll do this next, is the type of video files that you can choose that the thermal camera does, which are MP4, MOV, and TIFF sequential files. These are basically raw data files and will be saved on the second SD card if you need to, or is where they are saved. And the TIFF sequential is basically a raw data file that splits up by hertz rate individual images that you can analyze later if you know how to read a sequential file. So the video format here, um, we can choose what the video format would be on the visible camera and then the different video formats on the thermal camera. And then we have a couple of choices between RGB changing the, uh, taking pictures if we're doing JPEG, TIFF, radiometric JPEG, or on the RGB, uh, what, what is going to happen when we press the button. So we have single shot, burst shot, interval. So a couple of things about the, uh, again, about the uh, app um, up here on the top left. Some of the, some of the cool features is that we have the heat track and the quick track. So quick track is just like very similar to the spotlight feature. Go ahead and put your hand up, Jace. And put your right hand up. That'll actually be easier because it's got a cold field in the back. So we're going to highlight that. Ba bow And now the camera is going to heat track that. And it's very much like the Mavic does or the Phantom does with spotlighting. Except it's using the heat high-low in order to do the tracking. We see the camera up here moving around and actually making the movements. I'm not doing that, so it's tracking you. We can then pause it or turn it off. And the other one is the actual heat track. So heat track itself is not highlighting a certain point, but it's actually just what is the hottest thing in the scene and we're going to track it. That's what that is. So even though it's looking for a specific temperature range or hitting a heat track sensing, that's basically what that is. We can close that if we don't want to turn that on, but those are the two the two um, different types of settings that are available on the M210 and the M200, as long as you're using the Pilot app on the 200, and the differences between that and an M600, putting the X-T2 on an M600. So those are not available, the heat track and the, um, the basically highlight the tracking on uh, the M210, or I'm sorry, the M600 uh, app, but it is available on the M210 and M200. So um, if you guys have any other further questions on this, uh, let us know, uh, and we'll be happy to help you out. Thanks again for joining us, guys.